Hello, my friends. It's Nick, the ASMR nerd. You probably knew that, but if you didn't, now you know. Hey, guess what? Another week, another mechanical keyboard. You betcha. It's actually been a little while since I've looked at a new mechanical keyboard. And uh, this week's is from another company that I had never heard of until they reached out to me about doing a video with their keyboard. And that is this video. But in many ways, these are actually my favorite keyboards to check out. I've said this before, but there are so many different companies making so many different mechanical keyboards out there right now and you never quite know what you're going to get so it's kind of like an adventure every time a new product lands on my desk <laughs> is this going to be a budget gym is it going to be quirky and a niche or is it going to be just kind of a competent but uninteresting clone of something that a, a you know more popular manufacturer makes well, today's board, if nothing else, looks very unique and has quite the long list of desirable features at what appears to be a pretty reasonable price point for what it's offering. Today, we're looking at the Keyboom Phantom 81. That's right, Keyboom. That's K-I-I-Boom. Phantom 81. Why is it called the Phantom, you might ask? Well, it's because the entire aesthetic is based around this kind of crystalline look. It's got a lot of clear acrylic. And we have seen keyboards like this before. I've checked out ones from, um, you know, Iconics, um, Metal Geek, and others um, that, that have this sort of clear aesthetic or semi-translucent aesthetic. But the Keyboom Phantom 81 does look different. For one, it has see-through keycaps as well, which is kind of cool in a few different colorways, including a perfectly crystal clear option. And they go the extra step with crystal clear switches as well. In fact, they're custom crystal switches from Keyboom, which purport to be factory and lubed and linear and I'm very interested to check them out. On top of that is a whole laundry list of other desirable premium kind of features like a gasket mount which provides a more dampened, flexier, softer, thockier typing experience since that's very popular these days, the thocky typing sound. Um, hot swap sockets, um, switch pads, uh, all kinds of stuff, of RGB backlighting, of course, to take advantage of all that transparent plastic. So, uh, and wireless functionality as well, uh, of, of the Bluetooth and the 2.4 gigahertz wireless variety, all packed into a 75%-ish type layout with, very important, a rotary encoder. A knob for your volume or what have you. All that at a $160 price point. All that said, uh, Kibo reached out. They asked if I wanted to check this out. I said, heck yeah. Heck yeah. That sounds really cool. So big thanks to Kibo for sponsoring this video and for sending over the Phantom 81 that we're going to take a look at here today. I really don't know what to expect out of this board. Again, this is my first experience with Keyboom. I hope it's good. I guess we'll find out. Uh, so, without further ado, oh, I will let you know there are, of course, or is, of course, a link down in the video description where you can click through, check this out yourself, uh, see if it looks like something you want, or just keep watching and we'll find out together. Let's get to it. And here we have the Keyboom Phantom 81 in box. And uh, 
It's a pretty sizable box and it's pretty weighty as well. It's definitely got some, some heft to it. It's a heavy keyboard inside, which I like. I like to feel that. Um, we've got the Keyboom branding, the top left here. We've got the Phantom 81 branding, product name, front and center. And DIY mechanical keyboard kit, it says, which is interesting because kit implies that you might be assembling it, but to the best of my knowledge, it does come fully assembled. So, although interestingly, the image on the front here does show just a bare bones kit. So maybe, maybe Keyboom sells uh, the bare bones kit as well, and then uses the same box for, you know, both the, the pre-built and the, the bare bones. I'm not sure. Nevertheless, uh, we've got, like I said, I believe, a pre-built version in here. Um, the aesthetic has kind of these 3D geometric shapes. I'm not quite sure what that's about, but uh, it's kind of floating in cyberspace. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we've got like a stencil of the board here. Of course, it's called the Phantom 81 because it's an 81 key board, as we will see. And it's kind of all there is to see on the front. Let's lift this heavy thing up and check the other surfaces. So we've got, it says here, view more at keyboom.com. Some kind of wavy, oily, tie-dye kind of colors going on. I don't even know. It's an abstract anyway. Uh, not much to see on the ends here. We've got a sticker. Uh, nothing on this end. Uh, if we look around the side, it's the same. Key boom. With a barcode. And then on the back, oh my gosh. On the back, we've got a mascot, I guess. What is this? Is it a penguin? No, I think it's an owl. Maybe, but it's got, it's sort of surfing on an enter key and it's wearing headphones. This owl penguin thing has a lot of attitude, uh, much cooler than I could ever be. Um, and we've got some basic information over here. Really not that much though. 81 key mechanical keyboard, key boom, couple of websites, and some, I guess, contact info for different global offices for Keyboom, and a variety of certifications, and some more kind of abstract shapes and colors and things going on here. This looks like bubbles, almost. Uh, and that is that. Uh, overall, not a whole lot of information about what to expect inside, but it does the job, and uh, hopefully it has protected the board and shipping. It looks like we get in just by lifting off the top here. Like so. environment, but somehow, like, its face makes me think, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, if you want a sticker with this mysterious mascot, there you go. And then a big old piece of foam. This does look well protected.
Oh, very well protected indeed, because the whole thing is nestled within this big thing of foam packing here, foam padding of material. Uh, we've got appears to be a user guide, seventy-five percent. Interestingly, it's the Phantom eighty-one. It says eighty-one keys on the outside, but then here it says eighty-two keys. Why? Probably because you can press down the rotary encoder, the knob can be pressed, which would account for, a, I guess, an 80-second key, technically. Uh, this has the English manual, as indicated here, and so it looks like they do have different packages for different localities. Inside, we've got a bunch of Windows and Mac shortcuts. This will work on both Windows and Mac OS, uh, and it has software which will work on both Windows and Mac OS as well. Uh, we have a bunch of general secondary function layer stuff, including our Bluetooth connectivity and our 2.4 gigahertz as well. We get both wireless types. And RGB effects, naturally. Oh, on the back, we get a little bit of information about how to remove or replace the switches, which pretty straightforward, but if you've never done it before, I guess it's nice to have, you know, something to explain it. And the warranty, does it tell us how long? One year, one year warranty, which is fairly typical for these kinds of products. Yeah, it is heavy. It's almost a kilogram and a half. That is a hefty, hefty chonker. It's got some weight to it. Hot swap sockets, of course. Keycaps of PBT. Very nice. Uh, look at that. The keyboard is in a, a cloth bag. Well, that is fancy. <laughs> Weirdly never seen a, a cloth bag for a keyboard before. This is like microfiber. Ooh, it's very smooth, very soft. Wow, color me impressed. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm easy to impress, but that's very nice. Um, we have a USB cable here. Type A on one end. No special rending or anything. Type C on the other. We've got little caps to protect the terminals, the plugs. It is of the sleeved braided fabric variety. Feels pretty nice. It's got a decent flexibility to it, but has a nice thickness. Ferrite bead, hook and loop fastener for cable wrap. Overall, a fairly nice premium-ish kind of cable. Certainly a little step up from your average PVC coated cable, in my opinion. This is in black, of course. Um, this keyboard is available in three colorways. One is just pure transparent. The other has black keycaps while retaining the transparent case. And the third is kind of a yellow gold tint. And I honestly don't know what color we have in here. <laughs> Didn't say on the outside that I saw. I don't think they told me before they sent it. So it's a surprise. We'll find out. I'm guessing maybe the black keycaps version because we have the black cable, right? But we'll see. Also been given some basic tools. Oh, would you look at that? We have not only the nice style of keycap puller with the wire. This will protect your keycaps better, and it just feels nicer to use. Um, no branding on that, but still, it'll. It'll do a good job. But we've also got actually 
a fairly nice switch puller. A little nicer than what you usually see packed in. It's not the loop style, um, but it's a kind of a tweezer style. And that is branded. We have Kibu branding right there. And uh, it's metal. It's kind of a nice design. A little different from what we normally get. I like it though. And here we have two spare switches in our crinkly, crinkly bag. And the first thing you might notice about these switches is they are fully transparent. These are Keyboom's own crystal switches. Now, presumably, Keyboom does source these from an OEM partner who manufactures them, but uh, they are designed to Keyboom's specifications. So, being fully transparent, I don't think we have any, um, you know, nylon or anything like that uh, here. I think this is probably fully polycarbonate, top, bottom, and stem. Uh, we have what looks to be copper contacts and a leaf in there, and pins. And uh, these are evidently factory looped, so they are linear. It means they have no bump from top to bottom. It's smooth action from top to bottom. No bump, no click. Um, I didn't see any specific specs for these things on Keyboom's website, at least not the page for this board, but uh, just from the feel, it's pretty close to maybe a Gatoron yellow, like a G-Pro yellow, so maybe 50 grams, 55. I'd say it's a little heavier than a red or a Cherry MX Red or a Red Clone. Definitely has a bit more weight to it. Could even be as much as 60 grams. Like maybe a Cherry MX Black. Definitely has a bit more resistance than the linear switches you might be used to. But it is very stable, actually. It's got a little bit of wiggle, a little bit of wobble. Mostly in the north-south direction. So, very little east-west wobble, almost none. And um, it is smooth. Here, listen. It actually has a surprisingly deep bottom out for what I think is a polycarbonate bottom housing. And the bottom out and the rebound sound actually both sound very similar, which makes some amount of sense because it is the same material top and bottom. So you get a nice balanced sound there. And um, yeah, there's no scratchiness really. virtually none in its throw, uh, its full action from top to bottom. Um, it's quite nice. I think it looks pretty nice. It should let a lot of RGB through because it's fully transparent and it does have that window as well. It's a five pin design, so that should add a little bit of extra stability and it indicates to us that the keyboard PCB can accommodate five pin switches, which is nice. Um, and it's a unique aesthetic. Looks a little bit like uh, like the Water King switches or something like that, you know, in its transparent design, but this is fully clear. That's the crystal element. All right, well, I'm looking forward to trying them out. I bet you they feel pretty good on the board. Speaking of which, let's pull out the board. Oh, heavy, heavy, heavy. Okay. Okay, so, you know, it's not in a bag at all. It's actually uh, 
ah, draped with this cloth. My goodness. Okay. Wow. That is quite something. Oh, you know why it's heavy, you guys. Well, you'll see in a moment, but I'll show you right now. Look at that. This is, I think, a brass weight. It might not be brass, but it's certainly a weight. It's metal. It's very heavy. That's classy. All right. So this is what it comes wrapped in. It's a microfiber cloth, you guys, which is perfect for polishing your crystal keyboard, isn't it? Uh, and you're going to need it because this, this is definitely going to be a fingerprint magnet. Any monkey fingers on here are going to show up very clearly. Look how shiny it is. You can use your microfiber to, to uh, wipe down your beautiful keyboom weight here as well. Dang, you guys, that looks nice. Okay, I'll stop ogling it here. Um, let's come back around the front. Let's do this systematically. So it would appear that we have the, uh, well, black keycap or darker keycap um, version of this board um, where the caps are tinted. They're not fully black, but they're also not fully transparent. They've kind of got a, a darkish tint to them. Um, you can see we have an exploded 75% layout here, which is to say we have our typical alphanumeric keys over here, the regular modifiers, but over on the right we have a single column of um, nav cluster keys uh, and also our dedicated arrow keys, which have been both separated away from the main unit of keys here, um, which is nice. It gives some visual identity um, and allows you to easily find those keys with your fingers if you're a touch typist. Um, interestingly, Keyboom has foregone putting a key right here many other 75% or exploded 75% designs, you get an extra key right here. We've only got the three this time. Our uh, modifier keys on the bottom right here are all slightly shortened. Instead of 1.25U, like the ones on the left, they're just 1U, like the ones uh, you know, elsewhere, the alphanumerics. Um, but that's fine. That's an acceptable compromise to fit in some more functionality there. Uh, we have indicator lock lights or some kind of, you know, status indicator lights here between the alphanumerics and the three nav cluster keys. Those will probably give us lock key status as well as uh, connectivity status, I would think. There's four of those LEDs. The top right, of course, we have a rotary encoder. It makes a very pleasing noise. With little detents as we turn it. The color beautifully matched to the color of the plate underneath. It's this kind of gold color. And uh, matched also to the PCB. Look, the PCB itself has been colored. Uh, as well as the weight. Gosh, so there's some very fine attention to detail here, you guys. This is this is more than I was expecting. I'm not gonna lie. This is uh, looking very nice. Um, the rotary encoder has a textured knob, a knurled knob. We call that knurling. And uh, you can hear it as it spins. And I believe it should click in. It's a nice hearty click. Very hearty click. Very good. Feels like a solid chunk. And then along the top, we have the F row keys. All 12 of them, plus escape, and a dedicated delete key over here. I suspect that the functions can be rebound using Keyboom's software 
by default, we get a home, a page up, and oh, look at this, you guys. The page down key has been installed upside down. Upside down. That's funny, but it's easy to fix. Home, page up, page down. But there's probably some secondary functions there as well. Um, so the other feature you notice right away, looking at this from the top, is the gasket mounted design. That's what these pieces of rubber around the edges are all about. They uh, separate the plate and PCB from the rest of the case and provide cushioning, which allows for a softer typing experience, a flexier typing experience, which um, will probably be important because the plate, I bet you, is pretty um, rigid. I bet you it's a very rigid plate because it looks, again, it looks almost like brass, but I don't think it is. It could be just a colored aluminum plate, although I'm not quite sure. Um, the plate, though, also has a lot of cutouts in it. If you look, you can see it's cutouts in the plate between the keys. There's cutouts under the space bar. There's cutouts between the F row and the main alphanumerics. There's cutouts everywhere. So that will, again, confer additional flexiness to the plate, which will provide a really nice dampened, sort of bouncy typing feel especially when paired with the gasket mounting. So, goodness, there's a lot of attention to detail in the typing feel and sound here. Uh, as I said earlier, I wasn't quite expecting this level of, of attention to detail, especially when it comes to the, the typing experience, not just the aesthetics. So, I'm really actually kind of starting to be quite excited to hear this thing in action because it's got all the signature elements of a, of a really nice sounding board. We shall see if the sum is equal to the, the parts, you know, or perhaps greater than. Um, aesthetically, otherwise, on the top, the whole top surface is one continuous um, clear piece. There's no, uh, you know, markings or or graphics interrupting it. So it, you know what it makes me think of? It makes me think of a paperweight. And I know this sounds weird, but like, I don't know if it's my grandparents or my parents or someone I know had like a big, it's like a chunk of resin or glass. And there's something embedded in it. I can't remember. I'm going back to my childhood here, but it has that feel to it, like a chunk of glass or resin with stuff embedded inside. Um, and it's really nice. It's really nice. Clearly, Keyboom and their designers paid a lot of attention to the aesthetics of this board. It feels less like... It feels less like the transparent tech of the late 90s, which, as much as I love that stuff and have a soft spot for it, could feel kind of cheap sometimes. This feels less like that and more like a premium chunk of glass or crystal. Uh, the weight no doubt helps, but the visual aesthetic design certainly contributes as well. So if we look along the back edge here, we have oh a nice piece of metal. Again, I'd love to know what kind of metal this is, but it's machined. It's very lovely. Uh, in the matching gold here. Goodness, that looks nice. Um, and uh, we have a USB Type-C port labeled. We have uh, a Windows and Mac mode select switch here. Very nice action even on that switch. And then we have the mode select for Bluetooth on the left. USB mode in the middle, 2.4 gigahertz receiver on the right, and I was wondering where the receiver is. It's right here, literally under my fingers. Here is our matching receiver, um, which is unfortunately pretty generic looking. It's not branded, so 
I have the problem where I've got too many wireless keyboards and it's easy for me to get these mixed up, but for most people that won't be a problem. I am very glad that it has a place to call home right here. It's magnetic, so it just snaps into place and stays there. That's good. Um, you can see a very simple, clear look around the edges. Again, not a lot of obscuring graphics or marks, just kind of a glass-like surface. This is not glass, of course. It is all some kind of resin, polycarbonate, I don't know. I'm not quite sure. But it's solid. It's quite solid. Um, from the side here, you can see we've got uh, what looks like it looks like a silicone layer that sits right along the edge there. I'm not sure if that's that must be the gasket surrounding this board 360 degrees. Because if you look on the back edge, it's there as well. So the gasket must wrap all the way around. So it's not just where you see those tabs, but it's all the way around. And I'm not sure if that silicone dampening layer stretches underneath the plate and sits on top of the PCB, or if it's just around the edges here. But I do know that they say that there's poron foam in here, uh, which is a, you know, a dampening foam preferred by many keyboard enthusiasts. So I must guess, because I don't see the poron foam anywhere else, that silicone gasket must run around the outside edge and the poron foam sits inside between the, the positioning plate and the PCB. So really no features around the edges here. We do have sort of this slightly undercut design here, which gives it a bit of, just a bit of a uh, shapeliness. You can see it kind of runs along the back and along the edge. And of course, it gives us uh, an angle here. So um, this keyboard does not have a, you know, flip out feet or anything. It's just got a fixed uh, angle here of maybe four degrees or so. But that should be comfortable. You can also see from this perspective that the keycaps are not OEM. They are not Cherry. Um, they are SA-like, which is to say they have a bit of a retro feel with that spherical side profile. They are sculpted such that they, they raise, uh, rise to meet your fingers at the bottom and at the top, so they're not uniform height. Um, and uh, they have a slight bit of scoopedness on the tops slightly scooped, so they kind of cup your fingers. They remind me a fair bit of MT3 profile, drops MT3 profile, but not quite as aggressive. Not quite as aggressive. I honestly don't know what you'd call this profile, but they are SA-like, and I've seen other keyboards recently with similar SA-inspired profiles. They feel nice. They're very shiny. They're not textured at all. They're perfectly smooth. We'll take a closer look at them shortly, but I just figured this was a good angle to show them off in profile. We have silicone feet on the bottom that protect or prevent it from slipping around here. And then we have this gorgeous white. Holy cow, it looks good. It's in this matte textured metal with Keyboom engraved uh, and colored in black here. It's heavy. It's heavy and solid. Looks really nice. Feels really nice. And unlike everything else on the board, it will repel fingerprints. Not repel, but it won't. It won't get easily mucky because it's got this matte texture. The bottom feels very solid. Really no hollowness to be felt. And I think, I think that this Keyboom 
weight here actually um, helps to disguise uh, the batteries. I suspect the batteries or battery exists underneath. It's hard to see. It's nicely hidden. Um, but this has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. That's nice and big. Should last for a very long time. Also, we have a nice piece of frosted acrylic here to, I guess, just kind of hide the ribbon cable that connects to the USB port and the switches there. It connects those to the microcontroller on the board. Um, and uh, I presume it diffuses a little bit of RGB as well. I guess this board must have edge lighting or under lighting more properly. In fact, I guess these all around the edge here are LEDs. We will find out, but I think those probably are all SMD LEDs arrayed around the edge. The PCB itself is gorgeous. The design is beautiful. Not only is it a lovely color, but um, the actual arrangement of the traces is quite artistic. If you look, somebody with a passion for visual design designed this board, this PCB, because the traces are all routed in these lovely parallel channels. It's really, there's a lot of attention to detail paid here. And then of course we have the hot swap sockets for each key. It's kind of beautiful. It's, it's really nice, PCB. And it's beautiful that it matches so well with the other colors going on. Wow, okay. Keyboom, you have my attention. So, a um, few things we need to do still. Let's, uh, let's fix this keycap for starters. And as we do so, we will take a look at the keycap. Now, interestingly, the manual stated that these keycaps are made of PBT plastic. To the best of my knowledge, PBT doesn't come in this transparent, like it's it's opaque. It's an opaque plastic. I've never seen a, a transparent PBT. So these look and feel like acrylic, but I, I honestly don't know. As I was saying earlier, they are uh, not textured in the slightest. They are perfectly glossy and smooth. Um, I'm not sure how this printing is done. Um, because they don't look like double shot. Where there's, you know, two pieces of plastic fused together. But I don't think they're die sub. Because I don't think you can do that with acrylic. But I also don't think they're pad printed. Because I don't feel any, you know, uh, decal or decal on the surface here. It's, as I said, perfectly smooth. Uh, so I'm at a bit of a loss, honestly, as to how these caps are printed, how these legends are printed. Um, but uh, the keycaps are nice and thick. No flex to be had there. Pretty much none whatsoever. Um, quite scooped on the top there. You can see there's a little divot on the top that just kind of cups the tip of your finger and it's raised around the edge. I really like that feel personally. And then yes, this spherical SA-like retro inspired kind of profile. Feels slightly softer. Maybe another other keycaps. I'm not sure though. Uh, we'll see what they sound like. You know, whether these have kind of a higher clackier sound signature or a deeper thockier sound signature. And of course, underneath we have our crystal switch. So let's use our 
very unique looking switch puller and pull out the switch. So the crystal switch, the hot swap socket, we have switch pads, very nice if you look underneath, color matched switch pads you guys, the attention to detail here is insane, but underneath there's a silicone a switch pad and then if you look actually it does look like that silicone it does extend under the plate so i don't know where that pour on foam comes in but it's certainly not under the pcb because if you look you can actually see right through you can see my see my fingers my hand straight through the pcb there so oh, there must be some in here somewhere but the silicone dampening seems to extend in at least part way. Uh, five pin sockets, of course. So uh, any switch you want to throw in there should work. And south facing, which uh, should really show off the LEDs nicely. And that switch pad will help dampen the bottom out. This is a very well dampened board. The sound control looks excellent. Excellent. So let's uh, pop that back in. Pop that keycap on the right way up. Oh boy, this is gonna sound great, you guys. I can already tell. Um, but, but the one question that remains, well, aside from how it sounds and how it looks with the lights on and all that stuff, but. One remaining question is, what do the stabilized keys sound and feel like? Now, given the attention to detail we've seen so far, I have high hopes for Keyboom's stabilizer treatment here. Really hoping that they've lubed these stabilizers, maybe padded them. We have switch pads, so I'm hoping for stab pads. Um, clipped them. I hope they've done a nice job. We're going to find out right now. Let's listen to the backspace. It's okay. It's not quite as good as I was hoping. <laughs> it's all right, but uh, it's got quite a, a sharp report to it and a little bit of rattle if you listen. Not too bad, but not as dampened as I had hoped from what we've seen from the rest of the board. But we'll keep moving through. Let's listen to the enter. Little bit of tick there as well. Slight bit of rattle. The feel is good, but the, the rattle is definitely present. Let's, uh, the right shift won't have any because it's uh, not got stabilizers. It's a shortened right shift. Let's try left shift though. All right, that's a little better. It's a bit more like what I was hoping for. And spacebar, the hardest of them all to get right. Let's hear it. That's actually pretty good. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. I'd say left shift and spacebar sound pretty darn nice. Right shift or right end, whatever. There's no right enter. Enter and backspace. A little bit of tick to them. Um, so let's just pop these off and take a closer look at what's going on underneath. I suspect we have Cherry MX style plate mount, plate mount stabs here. Oh my goodness. This is actually kind of hard to get off. There. That's a very tight keycap, a tight fit. Um, oh, we do not have plate mount stabs, would you look at that? We have screw in stabs, you guys. That is uncommon. And it is uh, more commonly seen on 
higher end boards or custom pieces. So um, that'll keep them nice and tight. And uh, certainly that is a premium touch, but it does mean they're a little harder to get at if you want to uh, modify them. If you want to, uh, you know, put some more lube on there or pad them underneath, which I would like to do, um, which means modifying this board might be a bit of a challenge. Now, if we look at the underside, just for my own edification, because I might like to do some work on this thing, you can see we have screws that do appear to be accessible, but they're quite recessed. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I suspect if you had a long and narrow screwdriver that could get down here, then you could unscrew, unscrew that, uh, that screw right there and get at the innards of the board. Looks like you'd lift this off and then you'd probably have to take the top off and then there's probably some screws looks like on the on the PCB um, that will hold it to the plate. So getting this thing apart to do anything with the stabs might be a little bit of a challenge, but I bet you it's doable um, without too much difficulty. Anyway, yeah, a fair bit of rattle going on there. The other option is, of course, you could use a little syringe to inject some more lube in there. Um, these have been lubricated. If we take a closer look at the wire, you can see the wire is lubed, but not as much as I personally would like. I like to have a, quite a bit of lube in there to really help control that rattle, especially around the bend in the wire. I find that that definitely helps with that, uh, that tick and that rattle. Um, there we go. Um, but if you wanted to get in and do some work on those stabs, I reckon you could. That might actually be a pretty fun thing to do. Um, you know, a nice little project to uh, take this thing apart, see how it all goes together. Because, I mean, from like a visual design and like kind of product design standpoint, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. All right, friends. Well, uh, we've spent quite a bit of time ogling this thing, ooing and aahing over uh, the aesthetics and the general attention to detail. So let's find out how it looks with the backlighting on. That's up next. And here we have, my friends, the Keyboom Phantom 81 plugged in and looking very illuminated. This is an exceptionally bright keyboard, of course, by virtue of its crystal design. And uh, this is actually on the lowest brightness setting. I found anything but the lowest to be somewhat overwhelming, actually in a dark room at least. So you needn't worry at all about the, uh, you know, ability of this thing to get bright enough to be visibly illuminated in a, even in a bright room. Um, and as with all, uh, you know, keyboard backlights, if you're seeing a bit of flicker right now, that is not visible in person. It's simply an interaction between the frequency of the LEDs and the shutter speed of the camera and um, I've done my best to minimize it. Interestingly enough, uh, I found that it was reduced when I was in wireless mode. So right now we're not plugged in. We're running off the battery. Maybe something to do with the frequency of the power coming from the battery versus the, the USB cable. I honestly don't know, but at least uh, in person, you shouldn't have to worry about it because it's not visible. So I've got the keyboard set to this very neutral white, which probably on screen actually looks pretty blue. Um, I noticed that the white balance does make it look a bit blue, but it's hard to get it to look 
true white on the camera. To me, it's just slightly blue, but it's it's not too, it's a cool white, we'll say. It's a cool white. Um, but there are lots of other options here. Uh, we, of course, have the backlight, uh, an LED behind each key, and the side light, edge light, under light, whatever you want to call it. I think they call it a side light, but it kind of serves all those purposes. Um, let's, uh, I'll just show you, let's do the brightness here just so you can see. So function up and down, control brightness, it says the dimmest setting and before it goes off, there's off, um, the edge light and, uh, backlight are independently controlled, but we'll just crank up the backlight here so you can see just how bright it gets. Let's go. Uh, uh, uh. There. Okay. So that's the brightest. And uh, it's probably looking pretty blown out on the camera, but it, it's it's very bright. You can see it casts a lot of light onto the surrounding desk, my hands, and uh, yeah, this is a lot. Uh, and that's even without turning up the side light brightness. Let's turn up the side light brightness just so you can see it at its most glorious. Uh, this, yeah, I think that's maximum side light brightness now, so. It's pretty bright. It's pretty darn bright. Now, even if we turn it down, let's do that. There, now the side light's off. If we turn this down, there, now everything's off. So there's the lowest level backlight and the lowest level side light. So one uh, element that this does highlight is that this keyboard with its default keycaps might be a challenge if you're not a touch typist because while this keyboard looks gorgeous, illuminated, with all the backlight coming through the keycaps. It also makes it really hard to see the legends on the keycaps because the legends are centered on each cap, like they would be on, you know, SA profile keycaps. And being centered on each cap, they fall right over top of the stem. And uh, the stem occludes light from below, and so they show up as dark spots on each keycap. And when the legend <laughs> falls on top of that dark spot, as it does on most keys, well, it's actually pretty hard to see it. The longer keys, backspace, enter, you can sort of see the legends. Might be a little tricky for you to see any of them from, from up there. Um, but anyway, uh, it is something that I noticed. So... Um, if you're a touch typist, no problem at all. If you're not, you might struggle a bit to see those legends um, in uh, a dark room with the backlight turned on like this. In a bright room, uh, it's no problem because you can just, the light, the ambient light illuminates the legends from above and you don't have that issue with the contrast of these, these stems. Um, I've been fine for the most part with it. Um, you know, I am generally a touch typist, but I do still like to sneak a look every once in a while uh, just to orient myself. I'm relying on the bumps on the, the home row keys here, the homing keys. Um, but I just thought I'd bring that up. It's an important point maybe for some. Um, oh, and there's another thing to point out. <laughs> this keyboard does uh, automatically go into sleep mode when in one of the wireless modes, Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz wireless. Currently I'm in 2.4 gigahertz wireless, but the sleep mode is there simply to conserve battery. It looks like it's maybe a couple of minutes, maybe three minutes or so before it automatically does that. I don't think there's a way to change that behavior, at least not, uh, in hardware here, but, um, it's, it's been fine for me. It always wakes up right away. The first keystroke you press after it's asleep will serve to wake it up. Then after that, it will immediately reconnect to whichever device you had it paired to and will uh, start receiving inputs. So that works quite well. Speaking of features to conserve battery life and whatnot, this thing has battery for days. Literally battery for days. I've used it for days in a row is my primary driver on 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode, which is going to be uh, more of a battery hog, power hog, than 
the Bluetooth mode um, with the backlight on, granted, on the lower settings, as I said, because it's so bright otherwise, but still, um, it, it goes quite happily for days at a time. So uh, ample battery life, probably for anybody's needs. Let's get back to the backlight here and talk about the various options. So for now, I'm actually going to turn off the side light so that we can focus on just the backlight effects. Then we will turn off the backlight, turn on the side light, and uh, go through the side light effects. Um, it's worth noting that you can turn off all the backlighting and side lighting at once with function page up. And then you can turn it back on the same way. Uh, so let's just turn off the side light. There it is. So now we're seeing just the backlight. So to change backlight modes, we go function backslash. And you can see it is colorful. It is beautiful. The colors show through so vividly with this sort of crystalline display. Also worth noting, these keycaps are slightly tinted, right? You saw earlier they are black tinted. So if you were to get the full crystal version of this with the totally clear caps, it would be even brighter. And for what it's worth, the issue with the stems obscuring the legends that I mentioned earlier might not be such an issue on the version with crystal clear caps because the stems probably won't occlude as much light as these black tinted ones. Alternatively, you can also always replace the keycaps, but that does seem like a shame when it puts on such an amazing display uh, when it's, uh, you know, all illuminated and colored like this. Let's flip through a few more options here. Okay, so this must be a reactive mode. Certainly is. So that's shooting out in rows, like so. Uh, there. Okay, we've got a color wheel, uh, which hopefully is not flashing too much uh, on your screen. May very well be, though. Um, but again, not visible in person. It's just kind of whipping around. It's a pinwheel. Uh, this is a good time to point out that we can control the speed of these effects with, I believe, function left and right. So let's see if we can slow that down. There we go. That's a little more reasonable. Not quite so insane. I think you might be getting some pretty intense flicker on the camera, though, just from taking a peek there. It's pretty hard to control for. Um, but let's keep it nice and slow, and let's switch through to some other effects, shall we? Okay. Sure, that's kind of nice. I don't even know what that is, really, but it's appealing. This is like a raindrops effect. Shooting lines across the keyboard, trails. This is a solid gradient effect. Now, interestingly enough, we had a solid effect before, and I'm wondering what this one's about. Like, it's not reactive. And if we go, so you can change the color as well of each effect. By default, I think it's rainbow, but you can change it with function right bracket. Okay, so we can switch through a bunch of default colors. And back to the rainbow, that makes me wonder what setting I was on before, because clearly it was a solid setting as well. Maybe it was a custom mode setting. So this is a flipping through different colors option. This is a fading through various colors. That doesn't look as flickery on the camera to me. Hopefully you can get a real feel for just how vivid and bright these LEDs are. Again, this is at the minimum brightness. So uh, there's a lot of color coming off this thing, even without the side light on. So this is kind of a waves effect. This is an interesting one, actually. It's like dark waves across a solid color. Fascinating. Another reactive mode, sending out waves of light. 
twinkling stars type effect. Uh, the kind of back and forth. Uh, okay, and here's a reactive mode where it's just each key you press lights up. Again, these all default to multicolor, but can be set to a single color. Oops. Uh, what's happening now? Oh, there. I wasn't holding on the function key. It's only on the alt. Uh, so this is the, you know, into the middle charge up and shoot out. The classic sine wave, otherwise known as the worm. Okay, and ripples from the center. I always like the ripples, but not when they're too fast. That's a little more reasonable. It's still even a little fast for my liking. Like really smooth, calm ripples. But hopefully you can see on the camera, and it's looking pretty flashy, but hopefully you can see that the gradients are smooth, the colors are very vivid, and uh, the full RGB spectrum appears to be represented pretty well. Um, so, you know, the LEDs seem to be of, of pretty good quality, and uh, the color rendition seems pretty solid. Here we are back to a solid color mode. Once again, we can switch through the colors, so I'm not quite sure what the difference between this solid color mode and the other solid color mode was, but anyway, it looks like we have maybe 10 or so preset colors that we can cycle through on these modes. So that's quite a few options for the backlight, and they are the options that you would expect to see, more or less. Many keyboards have similar effects, but you know, you, you get your standard complement here. Now let's turn off, uh, let's turn on the side light first and let's turn off the backlight. Okay, so now we've got just the side light and I might actually turn this up a little bit in brightness um, just because it doesn't put off so much light towards the camera, casts most of it out onto the table. Again, for me, this is a neutral-ish white uh, but I suspect it looks pretty blue to you, especially because it's, it's casting this cool, cool white, um, onto, uh, my, um, uh, mat here. So, I, I call it a neutral white, and then I call it a cool white. I guess it is more of a cool white than a neutral white. It really, it is pretty, a pretty cool white. It's pretty cool. All right, so uh, I believe we can switch through modes with function P uh, on the side light. Okay, so we've got a breathing mode. We've got uh, fading through colors mode. We've got a kind of rotating shadows mode. That's actually really cool. I like that a lot. That looks pretty neat. Uh, wow, okay. Holy cow, that's like a strobe. Uh, like f a flashing light going all the way around. That That is flashing, by the way. <laughs> like, I can see it flashing in person. That's not just flicker of the LEDs. That's an intentional effect. Wow, that's... Uh, never quite seen that before. That's a lot. Uh, and then I guess this is off, it looks like. And then back on the solid. So we don't have as many options there as we did with the backlight, but that is also pretty par for the course. Kind of a handful of side light modes, and uh, that's what we get. And again, uh, you can change the color, and I believe the speed of all those. You can also change the direction of uh, the effects on the backlight. I cannot remember off the top of my head what the key combo for that is, but it is an option. So if you wanted waves to go right to left rather than left to right, or the pinwheel to go clockwise versus counterclockwise, um, that is an option for you. So that's the story with the backlighting. Um, there's, there's a lot, and it's, it is bright. It is very bright, um, but it looks amazing on the desk. It is certainly eye-catching. There's no doubt about that. Um, there are a handful of other secondary functions. Uh, 
up here under the F row, you have a whole bunch of, uh, uh, well, at least on Windows, you have OS commands like, you know, open browser and whatnot, file explorer. And then you got some media commands up here on the upper F row keys, play, pause, uh, volume and all that stuff. Um, there's a Windows key lock, um, you know, all that kind of stuff you expect. And then over here on the uh, function number keys, you can switch between wireless modes and USB wired mode and, and Bluetooth mode. Also enter Bluetooth pairing mode over here. So it's more or less as you would expect. Um, and it works well. I've, um, like I said, been using the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode. Um, as well as the, the just plugged in USB type C mode, pretty, you know, equally back and forth. Um, performance has been good. Um, I did one once have it appear to drop signal briefly, but I think that might have been my USB port because I'm using the front USB ports on my tower. Uh, they do occasionally have issues because once upon a time, I spilled juice into them. <laughs> so... Uh, they, they, uh, they are known to be problematic, but I've not had any issues beyond that one instance. So I, I chalk that up to the, the port being a little funky. Um, and the way the light propagates through, uh, the crystal, you know, uh, kind of aesthetic, the slab, uh, I think looks great. I think it looks really, really nice. So a looker to be sure and, um, functional. It's, uh, it's been working well. So, with all that said, and all that seen, I think it's probably time that we give this thing a listen, and I'll let you hear and see it in action. And you can judge for yourself what you think about the sound, but I will say, well, no, I won't say. I'll let you decide. <laughs> I'll let you decide. Let's do the typing test, and then we'll come back here and we will uh, chat about this a little bit.
Well, we have now had a chance to take a very detailed look at the Phantom 81 from Keyboom, take a look at the RGB backlighting and side lighting as well, and of course, most importantly perhaps, take it for a spin, a typing test where you can see, or could see, did see, and hear it in action, assuming you watched the last segment. Uh, so, what are my thoughts on this thing? Uh, honestly, I've come away a lot more impressed with this keyboard than I was expecting. I came in with pretty much no expectations or, you know, very middling expectations, I suppose. <laughs> um, but this thing has impressed it at pretty much every turn. Um, Perhaps its strongest point is the way it looks. Uh, we've seen a number of transparent case keyboards before, but none of them quite like this. The Phantom 81's commitment to the transparent look uh, runs deeper than any I've seen before from, of course, the acrylic case, which is very solid and I think more tasteful than others I've seen like this, to the uh, transparent keycaps, these ones tinted dark, but also available in a, you know, crystal clear plastic if you like, and even the crystal switches, <laughs> which is definitely taking it to the extreme, but it makes for a gorgeous looking board with the lights on or off, honestly. I kind of almost like the way it looks without the backlight on more because you get, you know, such a gorgeous view of that uh, beautiful positioning plate and the, the lovely, lovely uh, PCB, which is all color matched, of course, and that, that gorgeous weight on the bottom too. Um, I really like that aesthetic, but when you turn the backlight and side lights on, this thing just glow, well, doesn't glow it, it glitters, it sparkles because of all that translucent plastic and I think it, it transmits that RGB light better than any keyboard I've seen before. So uh, it, it really does light up. It is extremely bright um, if you want it to be. Um, so aesthetically, a big W, as the kids say these days, very strong. Um, but that's not all. Uh, it also is an able performer when it comes to uh, typing sound and feel. You got to hear it in action there. Um, the gasket mount clearly does its job, resulting in a nice dampened typing sound. The, um, you know, pads under each switch are, uh, also contributing to that, that dampening, as are the layers of poron foam in there. Uh, I will say that the switch pads do sometimes result in a, a bit of a flat sound, I find, upon impact. You get almost a bit of a slap sometimes. Kind of a flat slap. But I don't think it's too bad in this board. I think um, overall the acoustics are, are really well tuned. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a pretty flexy typing experience, but not mushy, right? Um, and all the, the uh, cutouts in the positioning plate are contributing to that as well. So it's quite apparent that someone, or multiple someones uh, at Keyboom spent a lot of time thinking about how to get really nice sound and typing feel out of this board. They had a vision and, uh, and executed on it really well. Lots of attention to detail, uh, lots of care in its design, which I really like to see. And honestly, it's what elevates a keyboard above just being a jumble of OEM parts thrown together, right? When you can tell that care has been put into its design and its manufacture. And the Phantom 81 definitely feels like that. 
um, and it, it helps elevate it into that, you know, premium feeling tier. Um, it's not a perfect slam dunk. I think that the stabilizers could have been better done. They're not terrible. In fact, they're good stabilizers. They're screw-in stabs, which you almost never see at this price point. Um, but uh, their tuning could have been a little tighter from the factory. There could have been a little more lube. Uh, they could have padded um, the stabilizers a bit. Um, but they just weren't quite there. There was a little bit of rattle, a little bit of tick in some of them. Anyway, not bad by any stretch. The space bar is probably the weakest. You can hear that rattle. Um, certainly, you know, better than what you would get from a mainstream board from Corsair, for example. But, um, you know, it, it is still a better experience than that. But I just think they don't quite live up to... Um, the expectations set by the rest of the board. Um, connectivity has been good. Battery life is excellent. I will say, on a couple of occasions, I did experience brief hiccups in the 2.4 gigahertz connection. I'm not sure if that is something to do with the board or something to do with my PC, my USB ports. Um, but uh, they were brief, and it happened maybe two or three times. Um, I've been testing this for a couple of weeks uh, as my daily driver, so um, worth bearing in mind, I suppose, and I'm not quite sure what to attribute that to, but um, in wired mode, it, it works just great. Um, and there is the challenge with this particular colorway of the <laughs> legends on the keycaps being very hard to read, when the backlight is on. I think that's probably pretty specific to this colorway. I think the crystal clear colorway probably isn't as susceptible. Uh, whether that's a big problem for you or not, it's going to depend on how much you rely on those legends, I guess. Um, but overall, a very satisfying typing sound and feel. Uh, Keyboom's crystal switches uh, perform well. Um, they are nice and smooth. They're not the very best linear switch I've ever used, but they are quite good. They're certainly a cut above um, the likes of more budget-oriented switches, like a you know a Gateron Red or something like that, Outemer Red, um, and uh, they are pleasingly heavy uh, for me. I do like a heavier switch. Don't know what the exact actuation force on these things is, but uh, some might find them a tad heavy if you're used to a lighter linear switch. Uh, they do take, you know, a bit of force to, to press down, but um, but I like that. I think it contributes to a feeling of quality in a way. It just feels solid and tight and weighty. The whole experience feels feels like that. So, as you can tell, I have come away, like, really impressed with this board. I think it's very, very good, especially when you consider it's actually cheaper than, uh, you know, similarly spec boards from other manufacturers, some of which you've seen me uh, check out on this channel. I think it's an appealing price point, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I think that this offers a hell of a lot nicer usage experience, aesthetic typing experience than, uh, you know, more mainstream boards in or around that price point. This feels special and cool and like kind of luxe in a way that a lot of other stuff in this price bracket doesn't. Um, it, the, and that's, like I said, a lot of that impression, I think, comes from the weight. It's a heavy, hefty keyboard in a good way. The solidity of the thing, how tight everything feels. And again, it comes back to that extra touch where you can tell that care has gone into its design and its manufacture. It just feels that way. 
and, and it shows. And you can feel it, you can hear it, you can see it. So, um, really strong showing from Keyboom. Uh, really quite happy with the Phantom 81. And I think that if you like the way this looks, if you like that crystal aesthetic, and you're looking for something that is different from, you know, the mainstream aesthetic or feature set, um, it's honestly a cut above most of that stuff, then I think you're going to love this board. I think it's a really impressive first showing from Keyboom. And now they're on my radar, right? <laughs> this is what I've been saying lately. All these companies making all these keyboards, it can be pretty hit or miss, but when you get a hit that's like something special, like clearly the people there care about what they're making and the experience they're creating, that's very exciting. And I'll be watching Keyboom with great interest in the future. So, uh, there are links down below this video, where, or a link at least, where you can click through and check out the Keyboom Phantom 81 and pick one up for yourself if you like. Once again, highly recommended if you like what you see and hear. Um, I think it's a really solid board. Um, and a big thank you to Keyboom for sponsoring this video and for sending over the Phantom 81 that we took a look at here today. Of course, a big thanks to you guys as well for watching. Um, also, a huge thank you to our patrons for uh, supporting this channel and uh, helping me continue to create the high quality ASMR content that you enjoy. Uh, there is one tier on my Patreon the Fusroda tier that gets their names read out in these videos. A personalized thank you for their incredible support. And for this video, our Fusroda tier patrons are Angel Garcia, Blacktooth Bob, Drummer Britt, Jake Lufney, and Rango Steele. A huge thank you once again to those Fusro.tier patrons for their generosity and for their support. So, uh, again, there's a join button below this video. There is a, a Patreon link in the video description as well. Uh, there are perks at every tier. Every patron and channel member gets uh, early access to my videos. This will, in fact, be the first video that comes out in early access. So... Hopefully you, your patrons and members enjoy that. Um, and all of them also get uh, a written credit at the end of the video, which you'll be seeing in just a moment. Okay, that's my sales pitch. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here once again. I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time. Bye for now, my friends.